Ashley for stopping by my workshop. Appreciate it. Um, you've seen that I have a lot of videos. If you haven't seen, um, go check my library. I've been spending a lot of time and uh, more money than I expected on upgrading this thing. Um, uh, I'll give you a little more details um, as I go through the video. Wanted to spend some time on the tuning process. So when I was done with my second Pro Tune, um, I asked the tuner a few questions that hopefully will help you on your search and it gave me some um, confirmation of some things I did right and some things I could have done better before. So the first thing I asked him was um, when I'm looking for a tuner, um, what should I look for? Because there's a lot of people out there that say they know what they're doing and they're probably half right. Um, they have some experience tuning, but uh, I think there's some things, some of the criteria, uh, the parameters that I don't think they really understand how to uh, adjust properly specifically on the FA engine on this 2017 WRX. Um, and he, he answered that in, in one of these questions. So he recommended going for the busiest um, e-tuner with a good reputation. So not just the first loud person that's like, all, oh, I know how to tune, I'll hook you up. Um, you know, go for somebody who you can you can look at their background. You can hear the kind of the word on the street. Um, I'm in the Indianapolis, Indiana area, so there's a lot of car enthusiasts out here, to say the least. This is the birth of a lot of cars that are out there right now, and of course, the home to the Indy 500. So people take the this hobby very seriously, but they're also very um, easy going um, but a lot of good professionals here so I was fortunate um, I'll go into the details of who my tuner is at the end so go for somebody who you can um, kind of prove out that they've been doing this for a long time look for experience on your specific engine with your specific mods is critical um, and I think that's what tripped up uh, my first tuner and lack of experience on this engine and how it operates. So when you're looking for a uh, pro tuner, look for that. Second one was how to prepare once you find a good tuner. Um, and he says maintenance, maintenance, and maintenance in that order. So that's absolutely critical. Make sure that you have a good properly running engine maintained. Nothing is worn, old, um, that could break down, especially your fluids. Uh, make sure your oil is fresh. Um, he says a lot of cars um, that he tunes, people just aren't maintaining. So uh, if you're not taking care of your car, don't expect like the best performance out of it. Pretty straightforward. Um, he also recommends um, good fuel, which um, I have the good experience out here in this area. The, um, the fuels are pretty good. Uh, once I got rid of my blow-by, um, putting an air oil separator, I got even better performance on even kind of moderate quality um, fuel because the octane was um, increased just by getting the oil out of that intake system. So my recommend recommendation is one, one of your first mods getting an air oil separator. Change your plugs out and get a fresh start. So that, that's, those are my tips there, those two tips. Um, he recommends a walnut blast, and what they do is the, they blast the intake, um, the valve seats, etc., that have all that corrosion from the combustion. Um, they blast that with wall, crushed walnut. Um, so it's harmless, um, and it just cleans up your system, gives you kind of the best opportunity for a great tune. That I didn't do. Um, I should have, and I'm going to do that. Um, if I get a, another budget, I'm kind of at a budget, but if I do some more mods that will need a tune, I will definitely do that for sure. Appreciate that advice. Um, boost leak test if you can. Um, at the very least, check all of your, um, your charge pipes, um, connections to your turbo inlet. 
Um, you in that area when the charge pipe comes out, especially on the FA20, I'm thinking it comes out the top. But uh, look for any coloration, discoloration coming out of the sides of anything. That means you probably have a leak in that area. And then just give your hose clamps a little tweak if you have the time and a little budget. I would get like the T-bolt type clamps. Those are stronger, more robust. They don't stretch and they don't strip. Um, so that that's not a bad idea to replace those if you can. Um, what else here? Compression test if possible. You can take it to a shop, have them make sure you're getting good compression. They'll need to push your car um, if it's not ready. If you can't hold good compression, um, your combustion, uh, you're just gonna get, screw up your cylinders and your piston blow, put pressure where it's not supposed to be, start blowing things out. And then double check all of your work because, uh, you know, work on these things, sometimes you might get distracted and forget something here and there. Um, I didn't have any of those issues because I did one at a time. Um, last thing I would do is go back in and make sure everything was tight. Um, when you're working with exhaust, maybe go in after the couple times driving maybe go under there make sure your fasteners are still tight because you get a lot of heat expansion and contraction um, but you know double check your work doesn't hurt and then so that's uh, what to do when you have a pro tuner and you're getting ready to start the process get your car ready and uh, go for it so I just asked them, and this is kind of a loaded question because there's so much involved in it, and it's just my ignorance of what a tuner does. I know basically that they take the uh, the logs of all the characteristics, all the things that are happening with the, the systems in the car. Um, and he said that there's basically every parameter is adjusted with all the new components so that it works properly. The main three are the boost, ignition, and fuel. Um, so on the FA20, uh, the WRX's um, injection timing, fuel rail, fuel rail pressure, and cam timing are crucial. Um, and I think this is probably what tripped up my first tuner. And, um, and I don't think he understood or forgot that I had a boost controller. There was all kinds of things going on in that first rev. But uh, I'll explain that a little more and I cruise around a little bit. Um, so if you want a reliable car overall, um, you need someone with experience on your model engine with your mods. So, and make sure they have a track record uh, that you can prove. And uh, just don't go for the, the first one that, you know, has a, the coolest logo or something. Is, you know, the, the person I went with um, came with uh, high, high accolades from the region and I, I've seen the work that he does. So I'm, I was very actually honored to be a part of that and I appreciate his efforts. So I'm going to cruise around a little bit. Um, it's just super hot outside, but I just got my windows tinted, so I'm going to cruise around in my shaded car, get the AC cranking, and uh, talk to you a little more about my first experience, which was not a good one. See you in a minute. myself I love this car wash all right so really happy with the uh, components that I bought for the car I think I got most of the top-notch manufacturers that I wanted the intercooler was kind of a you know a, a chance thing um, so far it's working well um, like I mentioned earlier, the tune is the thing I was most worried about and looking forward to the most at the same time. So, 
my first tuner was somebody that had some, you know, kind of a name on social media. Um, seemed to have a track record, um, so I went with that person. Um, initially, the response was good. first revision, the base map was decent. I would say it was the same quality as getting kind of a, a cob off the shelf if, if you had kind of the match, matching components. So it was, it was okay. Um, it did the, did the trick. Um, when the second revision came in, the car was just Anytime I put throttle on it, it would choke. It's like uh, it wasn't getting any control with any amount of throttle. Don't know exactly what the issue was, um, but it was almost like the timing was off, plus the boost control was off. Um, it, it just it didn't make sense at all. question I got was, did I do a walnut blast? And I'm sorry, but I'm not like, you know, Mr. Goodwrench or anything, but having a car almost stall out when you're giving it throttle has nothing to do with minor buildup and the intake system. So that should have been my first clue to just kind of bail out and ask for my money back or something. But I gave him a chance. Um, I know that my system's been clean-ish, um, but I know I should have done the walnut blast, but I, the symptoms I was getting had nothing to do with that. So, I got another revision, and it was just, everything just started becoming rich. The mixture was too rich. Timing didn't seem right either. The car was really kind of running like crap. So I was at least able to do a wide open throttle in third gear. Um, so I was kind of hoping that it would work itself out. he did respond to is um, I'm sorry but I'm not getting anything for the money I gave you so why don't you just close this ticket and we'll go our way so the response was okay good sounds good I mean who does business like that to me he didn't know what he was doing and all he had to do is say look I, I need to get some help give me some more time or hey I'm going to refer you to this person I'll give you partial I'll give you half your money back and uh, good luck so none of that happened. So I just, we went our separate ways. So what I did is I went to Cobb website. And I downloaded the closest uh, stage two plus map that I could find at this point. Um, it's the next gen. So it, it ran fine. It ran better than the, any of the tunes I got from that dude. So I stuck with that started contacting a very reputable tuner that I should have gone to in the first place. Johnson Tuning. Uh, very popular here in the Indianapolis area, especially with um, Subarus. And does great work with uh, Mustangs. So, um, man, the roads here. So I just asked him a few questions just before I ordered anything. And he 
said he could help me and with the reputation alone I was ready to go so I ordered that the process went very smoothly reacted and responded quicker than I expected Mr. Corbin and uh, so I appreciated that that was kind of a bonus um, so the base map was nice the base map covered everything it was running well Basically, just uh, just idling and cruise, I believe, on that one. Key point here is um, for the data logging. He did not include a couple of parameters that the first tuner did, and included a few things that I didn't even know were in there. So right away, I'm just like, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. So very specific to the cylinder timing and fixtures. Um, so now I'm starting to get excited. By the way, I'm just cruising to my uh, my favorite wide open throttle highway on ramps. This is where I um, come to do my wide open throttles. Because if the on ramps aren't clear enough very least the cars are like a mile apart by the time you get out here kind of on the outskirts of town and uh, you can just basically slow down get to 2500 rpms go down to third gear and just get on it and very safely no one's gonna bother you you're not gonna cause harm to anybody so just a little tip try to find something like that but anyways so Second, second round did a wide open throttle. Um, kind of knew we were kind of sneaking up on everything. coming 
out of the housing, and I just don't understand what is there. My only guess is that it's there to relieve some boost if you have some kind of surge or something, and like you lose a little boost before you blow out the top of your engine. So that is one thing I would say on an FA20 engine, and I can only speak for my engine. Um, if you're going to go through all the trouble of a tune and you're messing around down there, get some of that high temp, high torque gasket maker. Put, put a nice bead in there, make sure enough oozes out to where you're making an extra seal. Put your seal back in and, and follow the directions on the, um, the RTV. And then torque it up when it says to torque it up. Um, very easy, very cheap. Uh, I think the I think that stuff was maybe 10 bucks or something. Maybe it was a big bottle. I say maybe it might have been like 12 bucks, but still worth it, right? To avoid having to stop in the middle of a tuning session or, uh, you know, have to get it, get back in there. sneak up on an off-ramp that I like to take just to test out my suspension. So back there, um, that's where I do my high speed or any kind of uh, throttle stuff. Um, and then there's a place here I can do some high speed, kind of nice wide turns just to see how the body run it is. Because now that my engine is all that I can afford to mess with, um, I'm starting to tweak my suspension so that I get a, a pretty comfortable daily ride, but it just makes your performance nice. So, sidetrack there, but uh, fix the boost leak. Um, so now, now I'm going for another starting fresh on that second revision um, and now okay we're, we got up to like 17 psi and so he's, uh, he says yeah we're looking good um, cold good and uh, now waiting for the third version version 3 it was great because uh, when, when I got on it it was close to what we saw back there killing my buzz. You can tell though when I drive on it how, how you can get this thing moving good and nice racetrack style quality turns here. Here's a kick it down to fifth and just get on it. Man, just do like the Brickyard 400 right here. This little S curve. But anyways, next time we'll try that again. So we got good pull, got some good boost, and uh, I just gave him feedback that it, it felt great, and I just think, you know, gave it up to him to, um, with his experience on this engine, just go ahead and set the peak, target boost, what's safe. Probably. You can only do 
you so much, um, you know, but if you can get in line and if he can, if he says, yeah, he can help you out, do it. 